tu ia te rangi e tū nei, tu ia te papa e tākoto nei, tu ia te heringa tangata, ki te rau o te aroha o ihu kraiti, a ti hei mauri ora. So together the heavens, so together the earth, so together the people, to the plume of the love of Jesus, behold, there is life. Kia ora, good morning, no mai, haro mai, whakatau mai rā, welcome to the Hamilton Central Church Online Service. We're so grateful that you could join us this morning. Uh, we pray it's a blessing to you. We'd like to encourage you, if you're joining from afar, please feel free to send in a greeting. We'd love to have it in your own real, your own language if you can. Um, and also make a comment of where you're sending it from as well. Uh, we notice there's some people coming from afar as well, the last um, Sabbath services, and it's been a joy to see. So please feel free to send in a greeting of your language and where you're from. I uh, would also like to encourage those who are going through a difficult time. We know things are challenging now. Prices incredibly rising. Uh, prices for petrol. Um, and uh, so we just want to encourage if anybody's going through any difficulties of any sort that, uh, that's uh, of dire need and need some help and support, please feel free to reach out to one of the church members or friend that you know in the church. Um, and, and we, we can see if we can help you out there. Uh, one thing that um, I've come to think about over the last week, um, considering the prices, especially for petrol, that, um, when everyone was rushing out last Friday, and, um, and, and I chose not to rush out and, and fill up uh, our cars, I decided to just wait and let it rest. And, um, and I'm so grateful I did, because now it's all dropped. And it reminded me, um, this morning and yesterday, um, when I chose to fill up my gas at a time when the petrol had dropped, reminded me all the time of a verse that you'll know so well, but it's not going to hurt to remind each one of us again. And it's found in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. I'm sure you're probably running it through your mind at the moment, but it's always good to repeat. And it says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. So as we go through a time where uh, our, our, the prices is creating a crisis amongst our community, may we always remember to trust in the Lord in all things. And if we just surrender everything to him, he will take care of all our needs. So may that be encouraging to you and welcome again. We pray this service is a blessing to you. Kia ora. you have never failed me yet waiting for change to come knowing the battles won for you have
Hey, kia ora guys. Uh, my name is Dominic and uh, I'm one of the youth and uh, today we were really hoping to uh, talk to you guys a little bit about some of the struggles we have in life um, of trying to be better people uh, like Jesus. Um, but also we want to take you down to the river with us today and we want to show you uh, what we've really been enjoying and that's wakeboarding. And we want to help you guys hopefully understand or find some similarities between wakeboarding and being more like Christ. So what I mean by this is when we try to be like Christ or be like Jesus, there's some things we really, really want to try to be like him with. We want to either pray every day, we want to try to read our Bible every day, or we want to just be nice or kind to our neighbor um, and all of those things. But sometimes one of those things might challenge us more than the other. So that's what we call by catching an edge. So my catching an edge, I find, is consistency. So I'm really good for two days to read the Bible, but I find it really, really, really hard to read the Bible every single morning. So that's my struggle, and that's what I would call catching an edge. Because as you'll get to see really soon, catching an edge is not comfortable. If you catch an edge on a wakeboard, you smash, you crash, or I'm just going to let you see some edges. <laughs> Awesome. Hey Caleb, may I ask, have you caught an edge before on a wakeboard? Definitely. Does it hurt? Yep. Do you still want a wakeboard though? Definitely. Do you think you've learned a little bit from catching an edge? Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah cool. Oh, well, awesome. That's all I wanted to know, bro. Enjoy. Now, as you heard, even though catching edges hurt, it's not the end of the world. and That's the only way to get better. So um, I want to let you guys uh, listen to a few of our youth and hopefully you might find out that catching your edge is the same as some of us youth. And that also goes for you two parents. Uh, some of you guys might find uh, some of these things interesting too. And just remember that we're all getting through this together. So hopefully you enjoy these little videos. Awesome, so we've got Laura here. Can I ask Laura, um, what's your catching an edge? Um, I struggle sometimes to find um, rhythm and routine with my relationship with God, so I'm trying to work on that this year. Cool, enjoy! Hello, Seth. Hi. Now, I have a question for you. <laughs> yes. Okay, so, we are talking about catching edges, sort of like, what does what is your catching an edge, sort of, uh, with having a relationship with God, sort of feel like to you? Is it watching too much Netflix and not praying oh, enough? Think, uh, definitely YouTube. YouTube, definitely YouTube is your one? Yeah. Okay, YouTube is catching your edge. That's cool to hear. Thank you very much, Seth. <laughs> oh, well, so how, as Stella's here, so... Kia ora, Estelle. Hey. I'm curious, what is your catching the edge spiritually? Oh, my catching the edge is wanting five more minutes sleeping in when I should be spending that time praying and having a really great start to my day rather than rushing out the door in the morning. Just waking up five minutes earlier and getting it um, a good start to my day. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Hey, Hayden, may I ask, what is you catching your spiritual edge? What do you struggle with trying to get to know God? Yeah, spiritual edge. I'd say um, for me recently it's been like um, forgetting that, thinking I can do it, you know, yep. and then so like, you know, when God's been doing it the whole time, 
and thinking, oh no, actually, oh, I can do this. Yep. And then next thing I know, my eyes are full of water. Oh. <laughs> Very good answer, my man. Very good answer. Awesome. Hey, kia ora, Michael. Can I ask my friend, um, have you caught an edge on a wakeboard? Many a time. <laughs> it does it hurt? Yes, <laughs> especially when you go forward. <laughs> but do you still enjoy it? Yes. Yeah? You still give it a go? Yeah. Awesome. Now may I ask, um, spiritually, what's your catch in an edge? Like, is it praying? Is it reading the Bible? Is it just getting into it? What is it? Well, it's really getting, getting into it, getting a pattern of actually doing day to day. Awesome. Nah, cool. So, um, that's sort of what we're talking about, kids. We muck up all the time, um, wakeboarding and stuff like that, but we get back up and we have heaps of fun and we do it again. Um, so just remember, spiritual edges, even amazing people like Michael, man, and myself um, get really slack and sometimes forget to get that pattern. So uh, we just have to get back up and uh, try not to catch the edge again, eh? Awesome. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing all those big crashes. I hope you guys also got to enjoy... Um, getting to know some of our youth a little bit better. Uh, but really importantly, just to remember that getting to know God or being like God is the same as anything we do in life. It's not going to come easy. It's going to take a little bit of practice, maybe even a little bit of pain. You might catch an edge once or twice, uh, but I promise you, uh, if we all stick together and uh, keep connecting to God, he's going to get us uh, over that wake easy as. Hey. Morning again, church. It's now come time for um, prayer. Um, so feel free to bow with me as we pray. Heavenly Father, Almighty God in heaven, praise and glory to your wonderful name. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for the joy that you bring into our hearts. Thank you for your comfort. Thank you for your provisions. Thank you for your protection over us, our church, and our families. Thank you that we can trust in you in all things. Thank you that you provide for all things. Thank you that uh, you have taken away all our sins, that we can come to you, to the foot of the cross, and, uh, and be comforted by your love and grace, your forgiveness and mercy. Bless and praise your holy name, dear Lord. Thank you, almighty God. The Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. May the praises of our hearts and the praises of our lips never cease to worship and to praise you for your riches and your blessings. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for all that you are. He who knows the beginning from the end, the omnipotent, omniscient, almighty God, thank you so much that we have a powerful God, we have a loving God, who has overcome all things so that we can be saved, who has provided a way, a way of escape, and has um, been the forerunner before us, enduring the cross, despising the shame. Father God, and thank you, Lord, so much for our Saviour, our Lord, our King. May you be praised, dear Lord. May you be lifted up. May your name be glorified and worshipped forever and ever. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity to worship you this morning. Thank you for the Sabbath day that we can confide in you, that we can spend time with you, that we can connect with you and our fellow brothers and sisters and worship you with all our hearts combined in one, in unity, in unity with you, in unison with you and in unity together. Thank you so much, dear Lord, for all that you do. Lord, we just want to pray for our church, our church at, at large. Uh, we pray that you'll continue to um, guide our leaders, our, our, um, our pastors, and uh, our pastors here as well, Pastor Jordan and Pastor Willie. We thank you for the blessings of their ministry into our church and into our lives. We pray that you'll lift them up in their families. Thank you for blessing us with these um with our uh, new pastors pray your blessing upon them we pray your blessing upon our church members uh, those who are um, here this morning 
but also those who, for whatever reason, are unable to make it. We pray your blessing and your protection upon each one, Lord. We pray for your providence, your provisions, in every way to be poured out upon your people, our church members and our brothers and sisters. Um, and we uh, just pray that um, all our needs will be met. We thank you so much that we can trust in you. We pray, Father, for anyone who's going through illness at this time, uh, whether it be COVID or just a fear, um, uh, depression of any sort, Lord, any kind of concerns, Father God, that people might be, uh, you know, making think things a bit difficult at the moment um, for a range of reasons, and there definitely is enough reasons to be concerned out there. And we just pray that you'll continue to comfort your people, comfort the love in the heart, your love, comfort them with the love, your love, into their hearts, Lord. And we just pray that um, we can all trust you, that we can uh, put our, um, all our, confide all our things into your hands, Lord, and all our concerns and worries, cast them at your feet. At the foot of the cross, may we present them, dear Father. Lord, we recognize our unworthiness and our unrighteousness, and Lord, we, we come with nothing to bring. We come with all our flaws because of all your righteousness that you clothe us with. So we pray, dear Father, as we spend this time with you this morning, that you'll continue to mold and shape our hearts to conform with yours. Help us to lay aside the things that are hindering our walk with you, for there may be many. And we pray that uh, you'll continue to strengthen us, to help us to remind us of your love, continually and where you've taken us from and what you're doing for us day by day and all the things that you've done in the past lord and may we never forget your blessings may we never forget your love fill us with your love and your holy spirit lord as we enter into worship as we enter into your service this morning we pray that our hearts will be open and our minds and ears will be attentive to your word and we pray your blessings upon the speaker this morning we pray that your words will be spoken upon all of us and we invite your Holy Spirit to be with us all, wherever we are, in our homes and in our families. Keep us safe and protect us. We thank you, Father, in the precious name of our Saviour, your Son, our Lord and King. Amen. Well, a very happy Sabbath, church family. Great to join with you in worship again. And while we're still meeting from home, let's remember, you are the church. We are the body of Christ. So we're, whether you're at someone else's home, watching from your phone, you may be out at a park this Sabbath morning somewhere, wherever you are, remember, we still have the privilege to trust in God, to be sharing him, which we're going to be talking about a little bit more today, and to be representing Christ. So the church lives on, and hey, as we continue to wait in God's waiting room, let's trust that in his time, we'll be able to see each other again very soon. Until then... Today, we're continuing on the series called House to House, and it's really building on the way we see the church grow through the book of Acts, but also how God wants us to be growing as his church too. Last week, we looked at how there's a principle through scripture, how there were two ways of worshiping. There was worshiping in the temple, and there was worshiping from house to house. And the powerful thing is the house to house, it doesn't just have to happen on Sabbath morning can be every day of the week, any time of the week, and it's also something that can be happening throughout our community as the Holy Spirit leads and guides in your life. So the word for today is how we're looking at Sharebox. So house to house, and now how we can be sharing our faith in meaningful ways. Now, we may not all have the gift of evangelism, but we're all called to be a witness for Jesus. So on that note, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this amazing book. As we open up these sacred pages, we pray for inspiration. Ask that your spirit will come and do a work inside of us. Revive us and fulfill what you promise, that it shall not return to you void. So for all of us here, we invite you to teach us, inspire us, and show us how to share Jesus in more meaningful ways. In your name we pray. Amen. So I invite you to grab your Bible or your Bible app, wherever you're watching from, or listen along. And we're going to dive into Acts chapter 4 to look at how sharing faith 
can be something that's real and something that radically changes lives as well. So it says in Acts 4 and verse 13, read along with me from there. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, so that's boldness, not not boldness, it says, and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled. So Peter and John were preaching the present truth that Jesus was the Christ, but they were amazed. They were amazed because they didn't learn this at school. It wasn't something that they were skilled in necessarily to be sharing their faith. They had the greatest qualification. That was the equipping of the Holy Spirit. It says further, and they realized that they had been with Jesus. Overall rule of thumb, in order to share Jesus, you have to be with Jesus. As we look at some key fundamentals of sharing your faith today, none of them will work unless you have a personal and vigorating walk with him. So I want to ask you today, how's your walk with Jesus going? Usually that's the kind of question we'll ask at the end of the sermon, but that would be void. And if you're wanting to be sharing your faith in more creative and meaningful ways, then this step needs to be happening first. Sometimes we often depend on our walk with God that happened in the past or someone else's walk with God. It never works that way. Have you been with Jesus this week? And all is not lost. If you're feeling quite distant, why not reprioritize, ask God to refocus our time with him? You see, share box, to use the analogy, you know, it's not just something that you can pick up from a takeaway. It's really about how God wants to reach into our lives and pull out all the best tools every part of the day, tools that will help someone else to be with Jesus too. So we want to keep the box open. We want every tool that God wants to use to take in his own hands, to be available, to be sharp, to be ready to be used in his harvest. Are your tools ready? Is the sheer box of your heart open for the Holy Spirit to use? Listen to what it says in the faith I live by. And we're about to dive into these tools. Just a really key principle here. The faith that we do not know and comprehend cannot be shared. So if we don't know about who Jesus is, if we're not comprehending what we believe, where we stand with God, if we haven't processed it, really thought about it, internalized it personally, it can't be shared. It's about it's a bit like us trying to uh, complete an assignment on something that we haven't studied for. It says at the end, sharing is dependent upon knowing. And I would say furthermore, it's dependent upon personally experiencing for ourselves. So yet again, I'm really pushing the envelope here. For the, for the first century church, the church in the book of Acts, we cannot do something for God. God cannot do something in us if we haven't first met him. Or as it says here so beautifully in that verse, if we haven't been with Jesus. But every day we have great opportunities, even tomorrow, even this afternoon. So let's reach out, be available. And I'm going to share with you five tips of how sharing Jesus can be happening, not just for those who preach up the front, not just for those who have the extrovert personalities, all of us. Five simple tips. And number one, these spell the word, it's an acronym of faith. Number one is friendly. So friendly really is about the salt that we have. Jesus spoke about being the salt of the earth and the light of the world. So this is one of those salty ones. This is about the way that we treat people. So at the end of the day, people don't uh, care how much we know or who we know until they know how much we care. Now, I know many of us model this beautifully, but we have to take the time to be hospitable to be compassionate, to be interested in someone else's life, not with an agenda, but because he first loves us, therefore we love others. Check out what it says in Acts chapter 9. Just looking at an example here of this heart of God that comes with sharing faith. Acts 9 and verse 27. 
Saul, Paul had just converted, and uh, hey, it was pretty close. He was almost not welcomed to be part of the apostle crew. It says, but Barnabas, love those two words, but Barnabas took him, brought him to the apostles, and he declared to them how he had seen the Lord on the road and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. The study of Barnabas is powerful in the book of Acts, literally means son of encouragement. But we have a man here who advocates for someone who doesn't deserve it. See, being friendly isn't about being nice to those who are nice to us. It's about seeing the God potential in someone else and standing up for it. Recognizing that God cares for someone, God has a plan for them, and I'm going to stick my neck out because this is how the grace of God has done the same for me. And this is how that grace can continue to permeate through me to someone else. I wonder who that Saul might, might be in our lives, in your sphere of influence right now, and how God wants to raise up the greatest Bible teacher or pastor or um, deacon or deaconess, someone who is yet to follow Jesus. And it's just requiring a heart of God from each of us to connect with them, to stand up for them, to believe in them. This is a huge way that we can share our faith. At the end of the day, what we're really sharing is the character of God and a, key, a really key thing for us to be doing. All right, number two, this is the A. So we've got F, which is friendly. The A is authentic. Now, similar, this relates, it's kind of the salt and the light. It's about what's happening on the inside, but it's also about what's happening on the outside too. Because often we will say something, yeah, I'm a follower of Jesus, but what's happening in our life may be something different. Let's check out what it says here in Isaiah 52 and verse 7. Keep your finger here in Acts because we'll be coming back to it in a second. That's Isaiah 52 and verse 7. You'll recognize this verse, and it's, it's really one about sharing faith as well. It says, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news. So notice, for someone who can witness someone who can testify of the love of God, the appearance of them is very significant. They've got beautiful feet. They're moving around. They are being active for God's kingdom. Okay, so how beautiful are the feet of him who brings good news? Then who proclaims peace, who brings glad tidings of good things, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Beautiful thing. Not my God, but we admonish the, the very living connection that someone else, a whole country can have with the living God. I want you to notice in this verse, there is the appearance and there is the, the proclamation, two different sides, what we're saying and what we're actually doing. Authenticity is about the consistency of a Christian ethic and the way a Christian looks at the same time. So who are you when you're on your own, when no one else is looking? Who are you when you're not around your, your church family or people who you share the same faith with? There needs to be a consistency here, church family. And again, this is not something we can conjure on our own. This is a gift of God. This is a miracle from heaven. But And particularly for young people, all people today, you can sniff out when something isn't quite right. Let's take the masks off. Let's be real. Let's be consistent and make sure that our example is a huge part of how we're witnessing for Jesus today. A note here, in the book of Acts, chapter 1, uh, you may remember the promise. It says, but you shall receive the Holy Spirit. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And then it says, and you shall be witnesses to, so not to the community, be witnesses to me. So at the end of the day, I think the, the heart of authenticity is that we are not witnessing to other people first. We're witnessing to Christ. And that is that we literally see him. We taste his word. He changes our lives. When that happens, of course, there's a consistent lifestyle that goes with what we believe and what we say we stand up for. We're not faking it. 
because it's God who's in charge of my life. All right, back to the book of Acts. The next tip, the next tool that comes out of the share box, it's the eye. And this is inviting. And this is very much the shining part. This is one of the light tools here. So Acts, and we're going to look at chapter 16 now. So moving slightly further on, we're journeying through some different uh, different seasons through the book of Acts. So inviting is where there is an opportunity for someone else to get to know God more. And instead of us just being like, hmm, one day they'll find it. Someone else will come along. We become the answer to prayer. We become a bridge and invite them to make that next step. And hey, they may not always say yes, but if we don't ask, it's a lot harder for God to lead in that situation. Think about you. How have you made closer steps to God? Majority of the time, and I speak for myself too, someone has invited us. Or more to the point, God has invited us through someone else. Acts 16, verses 30 and 31. We have Paul and Silas who have been imprisoned, and we have the very guard, the jailer, who had whipped them, who is now interested in their faith. Verse 30, and it reads, And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I to be? What must I do to be saved? Beautiful question. A uh, similar question was asked in chapter eight with the Philippian, um, sorry, with the Ethiopian eunuch, and he asked, "What's stopping me from being baptized?" Now, at those questions, these are pivotal moments for us to extend an invitation. It's not for every part of the day or every conversation, but you can sense when someone is hungering for a deeper connection with God. Our job is to invite. At that point, Paul and Silas would be like, well, you you just need to read your Bible and pray. They could have given him ingredients, but they got involved. They invited him. This is what they said, verse 31. So they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him, to all who were in his house. So they gave the ingredients and then they followed through. They went to his house. Imagine there's someone who has beaten you and you go to his house. You minister to his family. And as the story carries on, they baptized him and his family as well. Wow. You see, being a witness for Jesus, sharing the faith of Christ, it's about living it with every person that God puts in our path, even those that we've just met, that we'd rather not, that they may be the last person that we expect. Our job is to say, Lord, I'm available. And he promises to do the rest. So that's the I. It's to invite. I'm going to move on to the T of faith. Remember, we're spelling this word faith of tips and tools of how we can be sharing our faith in Jesus. The T is, it's again, a shining one. This is the light, one of the light of the world ones again. And this is testimony. This is about the words that we share. Now, we can be sharing God's word. That is the ultimate testimony to the Lord, to the testimony, as it says in Isaiah 8 and verse 20. But there's also the other testimony it speaks about. And that is the testimony of you meeting Jesus. There are all sorts of arguments today that disprove or attempt to disprove uh, the reality, the presence of God. And there are some some great factual, historical um, evidences. But I think one of the greatest evidences is the difference that God has made in a person. The difference of a changed life. No one can can argue against that, especially today in a postmodern culture where someone's experience seems to count, seems to supersede every other idea. How is your experience being shared? You see, you don't have to get up the front of church or, you know, take a a fully fledged video like this in order to share a testimony. The best ways that I've done it are simply in an everyday conversation. Now, we have to be brave here because it means we have to bring Jesus into our conversations. So how did you end up doing that part of your life? Someone might ask. Well, to be honest, God did it. Or I started going to church and I met Jesus. 
Talk about God in an everyday way. And remember, a testimony has three parts. What life was like before you met Jesus, how you met Jesus, and how he's leading you since you met him. How he's making a difference, how he's transforming uh, the calling and the purposes of your life. This is a testimony. Check out what it says in Job 42. Keep your finger here in the book of Acts again. So just before Psalms, there's Job. And, and we are looking at a few Old Testament glimpses here because, hey, witnessing for Christ, it's equally um, as noticeable in the Old and the New. Verse 5, Job is giving, it's really a restoring response back to God. In verse 5, he says, I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see you. We see a transition point here from someone who intellectually believes in God, but then from someone who personally has experienced a relationship with him too. Now, we need to make sure that we have a solid foundation of believing in God's word. But at the same time, we need to encounter its author. And I remember even for me, after a few years that I had committed my life to God, there was this transition that made from my intelligence to my heart. Both, both count. But we see this transition take place here. I've heard of you in the hearing of my ear, but now my eyes see you. I've heard of what you did in someone else's life, but now I know that you've done something in my life as well. Now, keep in mind, all of these tips, it doesn't mean they're going to be perfectly working every time. Tools, they wear off. We, we sometimes find situations that become embarrassing. But hey, we are fools for Christ even still today. So let's remember, we use them because God calls us, us to, not because uh, we want to be showing off or we prove ourselves to be elegant or better off. No, no, no. It's because of the great love of God that keeps us stirring along. That was testimony. The last word the H, it's really a character one, and that's humble. Humble ourselves before the presence of the Lord. And particularly in sharing our faith, we need to stay humble. Similar to what we were talking about last week, to stay small. But that is that no matter how much we've experienced with God, no matter how much we know about him, no matter how many people we've led to baptism, perhaps, never graduate from the need of God's help. And I would pose a question for you. How much more do you need Jesus today than you did when you first met him? This might give an indicator of where our humble indicator might be, where the humble tank truly sits. Because the fascinating thing is, we know that being humble is right. Kiwi culture, no one likes the show off. But deep down, are we really willing to humiliate ourselves, to disavow our own ability to have the right answer and to know the right way? Because sharing Jesus with someone, it takes all of him and nothing of me. Please hear what I'm saying. We can never get to a point where we even show off about a victory that God has won. Even our very presence, our very openness towards the gospel today, it's nothing that our parents have done, that someone else has done. It's Jesus. How does uh, John say it? John 3 verse 30. He must increase and I must decrease. Check out what it says in Acts chapter 26. And excuse me for just harping on here, but I... I don't think we can um, race over this part too quickly. Acts 26, and picking it up in verse 28, Paul is speaking here to King Agrippa and a, a number of others about his own testimony. And I just want you to observe how he, uh, how he wraps up, verses 28 and 29. Then Agrippa said to Paul, you almost persuade me to become a Christian. So he's, he's very politely just uh, saying, hey, look, it's a pretty convincing argument. Paul said, I would to God, other translations say, I pray to God that not only you convert, not only you, 
but also all who hear me today, might become both almost and altogether such as I am, except for these chains. Let's break down the humility here. Number one, Paul acknowledges that someone's ability to change, to look to Jesus, to convert, it's got nothing to do with him. Yep, Agrippa's joking about it, but he's like, yep, and I'm asking God that he will do it. Secondly, you see the perspective of Paul. He's not just looking to King Agrippa. He's thinking of everyone else. You see, this is really the, the eyes of Christ in a situation. That when we look at, it, at uh, a situation, it's not just that person. Because God heart, God's heart breaks for everyone. We need to really keep our eyes open and ask God to show us what he sees. Furthermore here, and this is what really gets me. Paul is, uh, he's been arrested. He refers to his own chains and he says to these people who are yet to know God, I want everything that I've had for you to experience too, except for these chains. You know, he, he could have left that part out. But speaking honestly here, how much of the, the hurt that we experience, are we genuinely wanting that to be taken away from someone else? What he's saying in essence here is that God's plan for your life, I want that to come in full circle. And Lord, similar to the prayer at the cross, don't let my faults, don't let the pain I'm going through come on someone else. You see the heart of God coming through here with Paul, that as we look to others, we recognize they're actually more important than me. I'm uh, digging quite deep here because I know that we are the church. I know that, hey, we may have been in my church. I've served. I'm a key part of this community. But if I'm going to be the center of my life, it's a lot harder for God to use me. I'm just going to lay it on thick there. If your Christian experience is centered around you, there's something missing. Sheerbox is about the the doors, the box opening up and about God using us. Definitely, we're part of the process, but using us so that something much greater can take place. This is the power of the cross. This is why Jesus gave his life so that even today, that in dying and laying our lives down, someone else can be raised up. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray today through you. In 2022 still, someone else can be raised up. I've noticed that our purpose as a church is to be a major Christian influence in Hamilton City. That means that we want Christ to be lifted up. But in order for that to take place, we need to be pushed down. Now, I don't, I don't mean emotionally. I don't mean, uh, you know, physically weighed upon but I mean internally, spiritually, before God, it's Jesus who's seen. And even with the shame or embarrassment or the challenges that may bring, we're still willing to walk that road to Calvary. Here's a picture of one of our early pioneers. This is William Miller. Uh, you may well know the story of how this middle-aged, just over middle-aged farmer, God called to start the great movement, the great Advent movement that's going to wait for Jesus to come, that we continue to be on. And you talk about these principles. Um, he modeled them beautifully. And the main one was, was the one of humility, that when God came along and he started speaking to him, started whispering to William Miller, go, tell it to the world. Oh, no, Lord, I can't do that. Choose someone else. Or almost ignore, supposing that the voice is just something that he's imagining, but it would come back again. Go, tell it to the world. What resulted was a man who was willing to share his faith, to be publicly humiliated, and to do it time after time, year after year. 
It got the ball rolling for a grand movement that continues to exist today, that went through major disappointment twice. But so that still our commitment to be an ambassador for Christ can be left in God's hands. Church family, God is uh, whispering, echoing the same principle for us today to go tell it to the world. Let's keep the share box open and let's let God still share through us. Let's pray. Loving Father, we honor you today for being a God who can communicate your love in such beautiful and life-changing ways. We recognize that we get in the way much of the time, especially me, pray for forgiveness, pray for a new heart, and we rededicate ourselves to being tools that are useful, that are attractive, that are part of your gospel work until Jesus comes. So make use of us, Lord. We pray that you'll put us in places where we can be most effective for you, that we can be the salt of the earth, and we can shine brightly as the light of the world too. So as we continue to be in your mission field this uh, afternoon and also for the coming week, we pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace in Jesus' name. I just invite you for all of you to say with me now, amen and amen. God bless church family. Just a reminder that next Sabbath, we will be having communion. So get ready for that. And then also, we'll be having a training in the afternoon called Pass It On. It's for everyone, continuing to build on these sharing tools, but looking particularly about our home groups or future home groups that God is multiplying. God bless.